Good evening, and welcome to the fifth heroin and opioid art exhibit. To start off tonight's program, we have the first, second, and third place winners of the 2021 Your Song, Your Voice Shout Down Drugs competition. Please enjoy the music, and we'll get started shortly. He had friends, he had popularity, captain of the team, but through it downstream no one could foresee that after one pill he'd give his dreams to fulfill. He had a life to achieve, but when he found that feeling he couldn't leave, he thought he was lost in it forever. It's torture, he swore, when your parents don't know who you are anymore. Things cease to exist that you care for when you're always wanting he claimed he's ashamed when he looks into the pictures that are framed From moments of his past he was in pain Wishing he could go back, skip this side track She was alone, most of the time all on her own Not very well known and would walk through the halls with these She thought she had nothing to lose So she overused to escape the life she wished she could refuse Made her family confused cause they loved her so It's torture she swore when your parents don't know who you are anymore Things cease to exist that you care for when you're always wanting more she claims she's ashamed when she looks into the pictures that are framed From the moments of her past she wasn't pained Wishing she could go back, skip this side track Rewind to a time when you took the wrong path Say no this time and let it pass Cause there's other ways to conquer that pain Find something that you love the same Find back your control Before your life is up Fill up your cup You'll find happiness and peace They swore When the war don't let I'll do it only for you, you get to choose You don't have to sing the blues
Walking in the city, there was an old man on the street. He wore a shabby outfit with some white bags on his feet. He said, Do you got time for a tale of very long ago? I got something you'll need to hear, you really need to know. He said, If I could turn back time, maybe then I would admit I'm not who I thought I was. And I got the scars to prove it. My name is Tim McMahon, and I'm a supervisory special agent for the DEA New Jersey Division, and I'll be your host for the evening. We were unable to hold the exhibit last year due to the pandemic, so we are glad to be able to do this in a virtual format this year, and hopefully we will be back in person next year. This year, we have 30 submissions from all over New Jersey. As we go through the program this evening, we will start out with the message from DEA New Jersey Division Special Agent in Charge, Susan A. Gibson, given some opening statements. Then we will get into the program. Along with the artist submissions, we have asked them to submit an artist statement and a brief video explaining their pieces of art. For those that were unable to submit a video, I will be reading their artist statement. As we have done in each of the four previous exhibits, members of the DEA New Jersey Division, New York, New Jersey, HIDA, Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey, and the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse have reviewed all the submissions and the accompanying artist statements and have selected a first, second, and third place winner, along with an honorable mention winner. Before getting started, I want to thank the Partnership for Drug-Free New Jersey for hosting this exhibit online for us this evening. Without them, we would not be having this event. I would also like to thank our other partners, the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, and New York, New Jersey, HIDA, who have made this event possible. So without any further delay, here is the fifth heroin and opioid art exhibit. I am proud to introduce Special Agent in Charge of the DEA New Jersey Division, Susan A. Gibson. Good evening. I am Susan Gibson, Special Agent in Charge of the Drug Enforcement Administration's New Jersey Division. Welcome to the fifth heroin and opioid art exhibit and thank you so much for taking the time to support this important program. I would like to start by thanking our partners, the Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey, the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, and the New York, New Jersey HIDA program. But more importantly, I want to thank the artists who created these works of art, which makes this exhibit possible. The artists who have submitted their works are expressing their interpretations of addiction, whether they have experienced it themselves or if it was a friend or family member who have also suffered in their own way. They have all turned their pain into art. The artists have also provided artist statements explaining the meaning behind the art project, which is very powerful. 
When we began holding this exhibit in 2015, there were 1,587 drug overdose deaths in New Jersey. In 2020, that number almost doubled to 3,046. Nationally, in 2020, there were more than 92,000 overdose deaths, with more than 68,000 being directly related to heroin, fentanyl, and prescription painkillers. It is important to remember that each of those numbers represents a person, not to mention the heartbroken loved ones left behind. Addiction destroys lives, families, and communities. Several of the art pieces were submitted by family members because unfortunately the artist had passed away from an overdose. This exhibit is non-traditional in that it's a way to educate the public about the perils of drug addiction. We have to continue to work together to fight this crisis. Education is the key, especially educating our young people at the earliest age possible. Thank you once again for attending this event. Thank you to the artists for their works of art, and thank you to Kaylin Dyson, Haida Demand Reduction Coordinator, and our partners who have worked hard and dedicated themselves to make this event possible. If you or someone you know needs help finding treatment, please go to the Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, their website, www.samsha.gov. All you have to do is enter your zip code to find a facility near you. Thank you so much. First submission is from Carlos Gutierrez. Carlos submitted an 18 by 28 inch acrylic painting on canvas, and his work is entitled Transaction. Carlos submitted a video, so I'll go ahead and play that. Hi, my name is Carlos Gutierrez. Thank you for having me on your show. This is my painting called Transaction. It is based on my recovery journey and uh, my experience of letting go and uh, embracing a better and brighter future and entrusting uh, my higher power in the meantime to uh, go through this journey once again thank you so much for having me i hope you enjoy it and congratulations to everyone else who participated and best of luck to everybody thank you thank you carlos our next submission is from Carol Ann de Matos. Carol Ann submitted a 14 by nine and three quarter inch painting with ink and collage elements. Carol Ann had some technical difficulties with the video, so I'll be reading her artist statement. Again, her piece is entitled Without Control. In summer of 2019, I suddenly became life altering ill and spent almost three months in an ICU and live in rehab setting. The doctors and nurses surrounding me did wonders to save my life. But as a result of the immense trauma raging through my body, high doses of fentanyl and more were introduced into my body after other pain medications were proven to be unsuccessful. The result was a haze of living, waking dreams, disorientation, and ultimately horrendous withdrawal. Most medical professionals were responsible and amazing, but one woman did not understand the meaning of the word no. She was my nurse for only one very long, never-ending shift. But within that shift, she gave me drug upon drug and only served to increase my withdrawal, disorientation, pain, and growing rage. I said to her over and over, no more, no more. I explained to anyone who would listen, repeating over and over in my darkened haze of confusion, I lost my body and now you've taken my mind. Finally, a doctor came, shining brightly, and made an edict to all that no more drugs were to be administered. That I understood the withdrawal pain I would suffer, but that I, the patient, has chosen my brain instead of the mush left behind by the fentanyl and other anti-anxiety cocktails. This artwork is a manifestation of that cycle. The haze, the confusion, the pain, the repetitious begging by me to stop, and finally, the light of the doctor who stopped to listen and hear. Thank you, Carol Ann. Our next submission is by Kathleen McCoy Bristol. 
who submitted a 36 by 24 inch acrylic painting on canvas. Kathleen's work is entitled For Submission, Precious Cargo. Again, Kathleen did not submit a video, so I'll be reading her statement. In the crime of human trafficking for sexual slavery and or exploitation, the victim's rights of movement are restricted and consent is taken away. The victims are mostly women and children and are held against their will, often kidnapped. The perpetrators of this crime will use beatings, bondage, rape, abortion, and drugs to control the victims, resulting in addiction without the option of rehabilitation. Should the victims ever obtain freedom, he or she would need drug rehabilitation in addition to psychological and social repair to become acclimated in mainstream society. Thank you, Kathleen. Our next submission is from Chris Honthe, who submitted a 20 by 10 inch photograph entitled Black Museum. Again, we do not have a video for Chris. When I go through my daily life, I never once try to think about the moments that happened when I was a kid, but you can't shut them away. I'll be walking down the street and something will trigger a memory. Alcoholism has shown me the disease can make the brightest stars tremble. My black museum are memories. When I close my eyes, I see these objects that signify moments in time. Some I look back on and laugh, and some still haunt me to this day. This is one piece from the many memories that still trigger me. We all have our own black museums, and this series I created is a testament to those memories. Thank you, Chris. Next, we have Debbie Rappaport Pine. Debbie submitted a 14 by 11 mixed media collage piece. Hi, my name is Debbie Rappaport Pine. Turmoil is the piece that I've submitted for the 2021 Opioid Art Exhibit. This piece is a painful declaration of how addiction plagues the soul and spirit of the addict. I've shown that he is enslaved, captured, and caged by his addiction while he's also on the outside looking in at his torment. Others who are free of addiction swirl all around. They're able to climb and ascend. They are free. In grave contrast, his addiction holds him captive, barely surviving, existing. His addiction places him on the outside of life, of living, as he experiences constant chaos and turmoil. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Next submission is from Emily Fiddler. Emily submitted a 24 by 18 digital painting. Emily's piece is entitled Ophelia. While we don't have a video, we have an audio submission. Addictions come in all different forms. We find addictions in times of need to fill a dark hole that swirls through us, leaving us gasping for air. We feel empty, we feel nothing. Addiction is a patch to cover that hole that continues to grow, and the more one feeds it, the more that emptiness grows inside, creeping to the outside. I created this piece from a moment in my life when I was in one of the darkest places I have been. What is real and what is fiction I keep with me, but it all lives in my mind as truth in the way that I felt in that moment and the darkness that lives in my mind from the addictions that feed my brain. Today, I am in a much better state than that day, but who knows what the next brings. What I do know is that time is a beautiful thing because with time we heal and we gain perspective and most of all, we love. I heard someone say, love is at the center of everything. And with love, we overcome the darkness we feel. Thank you, Emily. Next submission is from Garland Holloman. Garland submitted an 11 by 15 inch illustration with watercolors and watercolor paper. Hello, good day. Uh, my name is Garland Holloman. I am here to talk about this artwork that I created called Hero vs. Zero, Zero vs. Hero. It's just a representation of how we can be at our best and at our worst. And sometimes under the influence, we can be at our worst which is represented by the zero, which is um, going through a storm at the moment and is not representing the best of himself. Versus the hero side where he's living his best life, being healthy, staying away from um, substances. 
and um, being healthier. So it's just a, a battle with ourselves to see do we want to live our best life or do we want to live a life that could be tainted, could be limited if we let substance abuse control ourselves. So that is the message behind the piece that I've done that we want to present the hero, not the zero. But if you're going through the zero state, that you can also better yourself and you can leave the zero state and become a hero. Nothing is um, nothing's impossible. So just stay focused and live a healthier lifestyle. Thank you. Thank you, Garland. The next submission was, <clears throat> excuse me, was done by Jason Koch. However, uh, it was submitted by his parents, uh, Ken and Liz Koch, because unfortunately, um, Jason uh, passed away from an overdose. Uh, you can see a photo of Jason there on the right. Hi, my name is Ken Cook, and this is my wife, Elizabeth. We're Jason Cook's parents. We lost him on May 6, 2019, through his addiction. We're submitting his self-inflicted crucifixion posthumously in his honor. He took part in this uh, in the heroin awareness exhibit um, in 2015, and he took second place. In uh, self-inflicted crucifixion, we see his pain, his hopelessness, and his despair, and, the, and an admission of his own guilt and his own culpability in it. He never blamed others for his addiction. He took full responsibility for it. But being the horrible disease that it is, it takes over and took over his life. And even though he seemed to be on a path to a recovery after 25 long years, unfortunately, the fentanyl epidemic finally caught up with him. So we submit this in his honor. Thank you very much, Mr. and Mrs. Koch. Next, we have a submission by Jen Sorensen, who submitted a seven by 10 inch watercolor and ink piece. And her piece is entitled, Last Words. Hi, my name's Jennifer Sorensen. My piece for this show is called Last Words. And it consists of the last messages or Facebook statuses or, you know, any, you know, our last communication with somebody who died from overdose. Some of them were sent to me, some of them were sent to other recovery advocates, but this was our last point of contact with a lot of the people that we lost. As someone who is in long-term abstinence-based recovery, which for me means I haven't used heroin in 12 and a half years, uh, harm reduction advocacy is really important to me. And this work kind of symbolizes what I try to do when I advocate because I need policymakers to see people in recovery and people with substance use disorders as human beings. And that's really what I hope to convey with this piece of art. So thank you. Thank you very much, Jen. Next, we have Jennifer Flynn. Uh, she submitted a 19 by 25 inch piece creating using oil pastel and color pencil. Her piece is entitled Journey to Recovery. Hello, my name is Jennifer Flynn, and I create Journey to Recovery for the Heron Addiction Art Exhibit. I create the artwork with a mix of oil pastels and colored pencils. When creating the artwork, I wish to emphasize with the struggles of addiction, but also the recovery from it. Falling into addiction is a deep hole. I represent this by having a man who's struggling with addiction, climbing out of a pit symbolizing his struggles. The man is making an exhausting and challenging journey towards recovery, but he is not alone. Above him is a support group, each one of the people representing someone who might help out someone in recovery. On one side, he receives medical and mental aid from the paramedics, the therapist, and the doctor. On the other side, he receives emotional support from a family member, someone who has been through recovery, and a friend. Both sides help him break his shackles as he makes his way out of the pit of addiction. While his journey is not yet over, his future is bright. Thank you and have a nice day. Thank you, Jennifer. Next, we have a piece submitted by Jennifer Palauea, a piece using color pencil. Jennifer's piece is entitled Recovery's Waterfall and we do not have a video. I kept coming to the same point in my life and I was getting nowhere 
So I searched and I prayed and I asked my higher power to help me find a way to deal with my addiction. I was so run down after using for so long, I was running and running to only meet in the same spot once again. It seemed as if there was no beginning nor an end in my life. There was always a middle. I was done, ready to give up. I didn't want to use anymore. Soon my obsession was gone and guidance of open hands to help me get through my recovery. I am grateful for the choice I made. Recovery's waterfall helps me to remember that my life is a miracle. And instead of resenting how busy I am, I am thankful my life is so very full. Thank you, Jennifer. The next submission is from Jerome Cuevas. Jerome submitted a 12 by 24 inch acrylic painting and his piece is entitled The Battle of Souls. The demons in my life will not have control of me any longer. You said you would never leave me or forsake me and I am thankful for you walking with me through this journey. I will stand strong through the depths of hell. Joy comes in the morning with change. I can do all things through love. No weapons formed against me shall prosper. And as I walk through the shadows of death, I fear no evil because you are always with me. Thank you, Jerome. Next submission is from Jessica Owens. We submitted a 24 by 30 inch painting entitled The Pull. This piece I really wanted to tell my story by really showing what my addiction looked like. These pictures show me at my worst. This journey to recovery has been the absolute hardest thing I've ever done, but it's also been the most rewarding. This painting represents my struggle between what's right and wrong, the strength in the steps I took to get here, and the love and patience I give myself now I will have two years 12, 28, 21. I can only hope to shed light on another addict with my story. Thank you very much, Jessica. Next, we have a submission from Joe Lamatina. Joe submitted an acrylic painting with mixed media elements, and his work is entitled One Last Sip. Hi, my name is Joel Amatina, and I'm humbled to be included in this year's fifth opioid exhibition. As an artist, I'm not a big fan of telling people what they are supposed to or not supposed to see when looking at a painting, but I'm pretty sure that the first thing that many people see when tuning into my painting called One Last Sip are the eyes of the large central character. Uh, while they seem rather beautiful and stark and clear, uh, they simultaneously feel rather empty and haunting to me. The one thing that people usually don't see at first is the pill. The pill which sits alone quietly collaged onto the bottom left side of the canvas. It is a symbol, a metaphor for any kind of addiction that too often goes unnoticed. Thank you, Joe. Next, we have a submission from Jordan Williams. Jordan submitted a fabric book also using mixed medium elements and her work is entitled Self Survival Guide. Hey, my name is Jordan Williams. Uh, this is the piece I'm submitting to the show. It's called My Self Survival Guide. It's a tiny little fabric journal of all the records I kept, all the information that I needed while I was in active addiction and trying to get sober. Um, if you go through the scans of the pages alongside my artist statement, you can read like the significance of every page and the chronological progression of how I got to where I am. Um, I chose fibers because I felt like it was the most intimate and tangible medium so you could really like interact with it and like feel the raw grittiness of the things that I experienced. Um, so it's unfortunate that the show isn't in person this year because I would really love for you to be able to touch this and feel it and flip through the pages as you read it, but this is the best I can do. She's very fragile. Thank you very much, Jordan. Next, a submission by Joshua Velasquez. 
who submitted a piece using color pencil. Joshua's work is entitled, A Parent's Tears. It's basically Father, God, and Mother Earth crying out in pain as they watch their beautiful children struggle and suffer with addiction through this devastating opioid epidemic that is truly destroying the world's future population. It can also symbolize every mother and father who suffer through one or more of their children's addiction. It can also symbolize a parent's pain and guilt that they feel knowing how badly their child or children are struggling with addiction. That's the beauty of art. It's in the eye of the beholders. As for me, it symbolizes all of the above because I was that child who suffered tremendously through both of my parents' addiction, plus my aunt's and uncle's addictions also. And now it truly, and now it truly, and it deeply pains me to say that for the past three and a half years, I've become that father, son, little brother, uncle, nephew, cousin, lover, and friend who's constantly breaking hearts because I am slowly destroying myself by injecting heroin in my veins, which started for me taking prescription pain medication that were legally prescribed by a doctor. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Joshua. Next submission is by Joy Okori, who submitted an eight by 10 inch oil and acrylic painting entitled Finding My Happy Place. Hi, this is me, Joy, 24, from Angola, New Jersey. This is my piece. As you can see, I'm sitting here on this bed. I just turned on the TV, lit an incense in my room, and I'm trying to find my happy place. You can see that I'm in thin clothing to represent taking off what is old and this static is my mind because I'm really trying to load up a happy place as you can see I did with the water crashing during the sunset the waves coming in I went into detail with the crash of the water into the moon because the moon has some sort of pull on me and the TV is powered by it and then there's storm clouds that have rolled out because I am now finding my happy place. Thanks. Thank you very much, Joy. Next, we have submission by Lauren Griglio, who submitted a 16 by 20 inch illustration entitled Amazing Grace. Creating this piece was a personal endeavor for me. My opiate abuse made me a prisoner in my own skin for too many years to count. I was simply a shell of a person when the insidious disease of addiction chewed me up and spit me back out. I would like to enforce the concept that addiction does not discriminate. Not only did it almost succeed at taking my soul entirely, but it also took the souls of both my parents and numerous friends as well. Let me be the first to admit, for a very long time, I was a willing participant because of how cunning, baffling, and powerful it really was. By the end, I was merely a slave that no longer had a choice. I made the gradual transition from, pres from prescription painkillers to heroin to fentanyl, from straws to needles. By the end, I was five foot eight, 95 pounds, living in the streets of the fourth ward of Patterson, New Jersey. Nothing seemed to work anymore, and each night I earnestly put, prayed to God. I did not think was listening, but I wouldn't wake up because I was tired of being sick and tired. That was until that same God that I swore wanted nothing to do with me did for me what I would never have done for myself. As the saying goes, for addicts, the outcomes are always the same. Jails, institutions, and death, unless we find a new way to live. On August 13th, 2020, I got arrested for the umpteenth time, but it was the last. And the last day that I used drugs. After two months in county jail, I went to my first inpatient treatment, which I've currently been residing for 10 months. Being in recovery for almost a year hasn't been easy by any stretch of the imagination, but boy, has it been worth it. I have rekindled the relationships with my sister, brother-in-law, and my grandparents. I have built a relationship with the very God that saved me 
and has given me a second chance at a purpose-driven life. Without the good news home for women, that, that would never have been possible. This art piece represents everything I once was and everything I am today. Thank you for shedding the light of exposure and awareness to the vicious disease that has brought so many people to their knees and to their graves. Thank you and congratulations, Lauren, on your continued recovery. Next is a submission by Lisa Zimmer, who submitted a 16 by 20 inch canvas piece entitled Another Day at the Office. Opioid use disorder does not discriminate. It doesn't ask if you're a daughter, a wife, a mother, or an employee. This creation is showing a successful businesswoman who was constantly reminded of who she was and what she could be again all too quickly. You see, it follows us around in even the best times, but especially the worst times. This woman is me, and this is my battle. Thank you for looking and for listening. Stay safe. Thank you, Lisa. Next, we have Lauren Dan, who submitted a 36 by 36 oil and butcher block paper on canvas. Lauren's work is entitled Amanda. My name is Lauren Dan. I'm from Woodbury, New Jersey, and the painting I submitted was entitled Amanda. Amanda Robin Kammerling died of a drug overdose on May 10th, 2005 in Glenside, California. She was 25 years old. She was a former resident of Pittman, New Jersey. She had recently graduated from the University of Southern California in the School of Fine Arts. Amanda was an accomplished painter with a passionate commitment to art. She had said painting was where most of the parts of my world and life were transcendent and possible. She accomplished great things and did more in her short 23 years than most do in a lifetime. She will be painfully missed. Thank you for your submission, Lauren. Next up, we have Leah Rose Quinones, an eighth grader who submitted a drawing entitled Powerful. This piece of artwork that I created is called Powerful. It represents the fact that we all have different experiences in life and drugs should not be one of them. The girl in the picture shows the sadness that drugs bring in life. It shows the need for more of it, the risk of trying it even once, the overdoses it can cause. So many things can happen if you use or even attempt to try them. Taking drugs can cause you to lose out on important moments in life. Important things like spending time with family, kids, friends, and great career opportunities. The girl thinks about this and sees sadness through it. That's why I believe that it's essential to live your life beyond drugs. Thank you very much, Leah, and a great powerful message from somebody as, as young as you. Next, we have another eighth grader, Olivia Murphy, who submitted a paint on canvas whose work is entitled Glowing Affection. Hi, my name is Olivia Murphy from Lawrenceville, New Jersey. I'll be attending eighth grade this September. My painting consists an image of hands lowering towards a pill. This is to express the addiction people begin to form for a substance. My painting also expresses how this addiction can take over someone's life which is why the pill is large and centered in the middle. I hope you like my painting. Thank you very much, Olivia, and also a great message for someone as young as you. Our next submission is from Patrick Tanzi, who submitted an 18 by 24 inch photograph entitled Love is the Cure. This depicts a photograph taken in an abandoned prison depicting the bondage, madness, and chaos of heroin use. The heart-shaped table provides the solution to addiction, love. Thank you very much, Patrick. 
Next submission is by Rob Serby. This is a digital screen print and marker on a skateboard. His title, his work is entitled Hope, Hold On, Pain Ends. Hi, my name is Rob Serby, and I'm the creator behind the skateboard Hope, Hold On, Pain Ends. I've been part of the opioid epidemic for 15 years. During a relapse last year, I was at New Hope, and on the wall I saw something, and it said Hope, Hold On, Pain Ends. And it just truly inspired me. It's part of my brand, I'm building a skateboard company, and uh, it's my prize design. So I added it to this skateboard, and uh, I added those names to it. Those names are many people I've met over the years and the, and the facilities I've met them in, whether rehab or psych ward or mission program. Um, th this is bad out there. 70,000 people died last year, and uh, really, I have a mission now to uh, just help as many as I can. So remember, hope, hold on, pain ends. Thank you very much, Robert. The next work of art was submitted by Taylor Cassisi, who submitted a 30 by 40 inch oil painting on canvas. His work is entitled, An Old Acquaintance Served. Hello, my name is Taylor Cassisi, and I am a portrait and figurative artist from Bayonne, New Jersey. My submission uh, titled, An Old Acquaintance Severed, was inspired by um, me bearing witness to the ravaging effects of addiction. Um, as we know, during these uncertain times, uh, people have been struggling with mental health and addiction, and I felt it important to highlight this to maybe give others out there um, something to uh, maybe relate to or find uh, solace in. So uh, I want to thank you again for your time, and I also want to dedicate my painting to my uncle Mark and my friend Chris, who unfortunately uh, succumbed to their addictions. Um, but thank you again, and uh, have a nice day. Thank you, Taylor. Next, we have a submission from Valeria Karlamova, who submitted a 30 by 30 minute 39 inch oil and gold leaf painting on canvas entitled Religion of the 21st Century. The piece depicts the problem of our current society where people believe in and worship as an idol the controlling power of drugs, alcohol, and social media. Those elements don't hold much but control, but can control our entire life where without them, we don't feel accomplished. The main figure is made in dark hues with a few facial characteristics to look anonymous that behind the worshiper can be anybody, rich, poor, white, black, etc. Some of the drugs were made in the shape of gemstones to show how much addiction can alter our vision and perception of the world. Thank you, Valeria. Next, submission Valerie Seymour, who submitted a photograph. Uh, Valerie was unable to submit a video uh, because she wasn't feeling very well, so I'll go ahead and read uh, her uh, artist statement. There are so many influences out there in the world that teach our children about drugs and opioids. We have to remember everything our children see us do, they will mimic. We always tell them to do as I say and not as I do, but their little minds are like sponges. Our children are the new generation that will lead the future and are on our shoulders ready to rule. So let's teach them to be leaders and not followers. Great message, Valerie, thank you. The next submission is from Virginia Johns, who submitted a 28 by 22 inch um, and created her piece using acrylic, sticks, paper, and brass tacks on canvas. Virginia's work is entitled 63 Pink. 63 Pink. Some make it out alive. Some make it out alive. Watching, devastating, trusting, near impossible. Bargaining, praying, wishing, hoping, negotiating. None of it works. Maybe something works. Watching as someone actually makes it out. Not only alive, but starting to thrive. The invisible hands that must certainly be guiding, carrying, holding. 
because it is more than human that can help with this, this, this thing. There are no words for it. This thing that takes people we love, chews them to pieces sometimes, doesn't even spit them out. But then something happens, a moment happens, a miracle happens. And in the unsuspecting pink hue is a miracle. The 63rd day, the 63rd year, he heard you. Thank you, Virginia. Next, we have a submission uh, by Wendy Petrowski on behalf of her son, Michael Petrowski, uh, who unfortunately passed away. Um, the submission is an eight by 11 inch drawing made by Michael Petrowski. Uh, Wendy states that Michael uh, was tall, handsome, and funny. He was a good kid in spite of his addiction. And this work is entitled, My Heart by Michael Petrowski. The mother artist statement states, I am submitting this work posthumously for my son, Michael, who died on September 6, 2017. I did not know that he spoke to his half sister, Michelle, about his addiction and that she told him he could not continue to hurt his family. He drew this picture after the conversation and then told his girlfriend he could no longer hurt his family and he overdosed that night. When I saw the picture, I thought it said Michael, but then after I heard the story from his girlfriend and took another look at the picture, I realized it was the result of that conversation he had had. My son suffered so much for six years and then lost his battle. We're very sorry for your loss, Wendy, and thank you so much for the submission. Our final submission is by Zeta Thonia, who submitted a 16 by 24 inch piece using melted wax. Her work is entitled, Take a Little, Lose a Lot. This piece of art is an allegory to the ongoing process that is recovery, as well as the one choice it takes to either throw it all away or continue on your journey. The symbolism behind an angel losing its wings is that the pure entity that was has committed a trespass worth punishment, banishment, or exile. In Take a Little, Lose a Lot, you will notice how there is what seems to look like a dark angel handing you a token. That red token represents the gamble with your life that you take every time you take a pill, or in my case, every time I took a hit. At some point in our addiction, we've all played a dark angel giving up one of our wings to share the temptations that come with the isolation that is active addiction. Notice how the other angels have turned away from the one passing the token. It is the left wing that is missing from this angel, my weaker arm. So many times that arm, my wing, has represented relapse. And as I created this piece using my child's broken crayons and a lit candle, now I see a choice in head, ahead instead. Thank you very much, Zeta. As I mentioned at the beginning, for each art exhibit, uh, the partners uh, in the art exhibit have selected first, second, third, and honorable mention winners. So let's see who we have. For honorable mention, congratulations to Lisa Zimmer with her submission of another day at the office. Congratulations, and thank you again, Lisa, for your submission and the message that you provided. In third place, the submission from Jerome Cuevas, entitled The Battle of the Souls. Again, congratulations, Jerome. Uh, thank you so much for your submission and the messaging that you provided. In second place, the piece of work that was done by Jason Koch and submitted by his parents entitled Self-Inflicted Crucifixion. Uh, this is actually the second second place win for Jason. He participated in our 2015 heroin and opioid art exhibit and also uh, took second place in that exhibit. So thank you, Mr. and Mrs. Koch for submitting his artwork again. And first place goes to the winner of the 2021 Heroin and Opioid Art Exhibit, 
goes to Taylor Cassisi for his work and old acquaintance served. Congratulations again, Taylor. Thank you for your submission and for your messaging. Thank you to all the winners. Thank you. I wanna thank again, our partners uh, who supported the fifth heroin and opioid art exhibit, uh, the Governor's Council on Alcoholism and Drug Abuse, the Partnership for a Drug-Free New Jersey, New York, New Jersey, HIDA, and the DEA New Jersey Division. Uh, thank you again to the Partnership for Drug-Free New Jersey also for making this event possible. Uh, the uh, art exhibit will be available uh, to be viewed for those that haven't seen it, uh, if you can all pass the word, um, and we'll have that link available um, for you to see. So again, thank you again. Thank you very much for your submissions. They were all very powerful and all provided great messages for everybody. Thanks again, and we'll see you next year for the sixth heroin and opioid art exhibit, hopefully in person. Thank you very much.